back, everyone, to the Flying Lion podcast. What a week for FC Cincinnati. Sam, nine points in eight days. What a week. We're buzzing. We are absolutely buzzing. Um, back on top of the East where we belong. Um, man, great feelings for FCC or FCC land right now, dude. This is this is awesome. Um, it feels like this team um chemistry is coming together. I know obviously we've been hit by the injury bug um past couple of weeks, but um all the people that are healthy are really, really coming together chemistry wise, and it's exciting to see. Yeah, absolutely. And like, who would have thought, I mean, what did we have? Like what? 10 goals, I think in this past week, who would have thought, you know, at the beginning of the season, this team would get 10 goals in three games. Um, but we're here, we're doing it. The team is really coming together. This is the vision that we saw, you know, going into the uh, champions cup, just putting the pieces together and now they're gelling. Um, Sam, we'll, we'll kind of break down the DC United game on Wednesday, We'll have a big breakdown of the inner Miami game. And then second part of the episode, we'll get into our typical Jersey swaps cards of the week, a little bit of Olympic team news. And then we have a preview for you for the Charlotte game, which is next Saturday. But as I mentioned, um, match day 24, we played DC United at DC United. Sam, I was a little bit nervous based on my last time I was at DC watching FC Cincinnati play. Um, last year, we did get a little bit spanked there, but we did a lot better. Three, two win which made us at the time 14, four and three, um, but second in supporter shield after that win. the lineup that we rolled out, I'm going to let you kind of break down. It was a little bit different than what we had seen, but a lot of the same. Yeah, I know Pat's usually gone with this rotation. Um, every once in a while, he'll mix it up. Um, same kind of back line that we're used to seeing the past couple of weeks. Um, Yedlin Murphy Robinson back with the FC Cincinnati squad after the U S Copa America. Um, and then Keller in the back, Orlando Buka, uh, OB back, um, Acosta Dotto and Kelsey up top, uh, with the young guys up top. That's usually the, the mix that you'll see. Um, it's either Kubo up top with Kelsey or, um, and, you know, as we'll see in Miami, uh, a little different rotation there, but happy to have Robinson back in the squad. Yeah, for absolutely. I mean, like, honestly, I'm not going to lie. When I saw it, I was shocked that he was even there, shocked that he was even starting um, for everyone. I think that was the case. Shout out to FC Cincinnati for getting miles um, from Kansas City to D.C., you know, really from Monday until Wednesday. And then uh, for Robinson to convince the coaching staff to say, hey, I didn't play a single minute. I'm ready to go. You know, I, I practiced with some good players. We had some meaningful competition, whatever. I want to get back into a game and I want to support my team. I mean, as Miles, from his standpoint, seeing Nick go down, seeing Miazga go down, you know, while he's gone, I'm sure the guy is just itching to be back and to support his club. So that was really good to see. Going into the beginning of the game, um, we started off well. I mean, we had a decent press. I think both teams were kind of trying to figure out each other in some ways. Um, but ninth minute, we have a nice pressing goal um, by one um, Kevin Kelsey. I mean, Sam, what did you see in that play? Yeah, I, I think Kelsey's goal definitely helped FCC um, kind of put the nerves away jitters at ease a little bit um, and created a lead without much energy, right, which is always good. Um, I mean, that's, it's one of those cases where keeper takes a heavy touch and Kelsey takes full advantage of it. Um, I mean, from the first angle, I'm sure he, as well as everybody else watching, wasn't really sure if it was going to go in because it went so high in the air. Um, you kind of thought, is it going to hit the crossbar? Is it going to go over? Um, no, it delicately kind of just went into the, the back of the net. Nice little one, two bounce and, and in. Yeah, it was a technical goal scored off of his leg and not his head for once, which was kind of a funny <laughs> comment I saw somebody put out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, to your point about energy, I mean, yeah, if the game is kind of like trying to figure it out midweek match and you score early, I mean, it really presses the other team to try to push. Um, and to be honest, I mean, they did respond in the 24th minute off a throw in, Sam. Kind of, again, interesting if you want to call it a set piece, you know, corners, you know, free kicks, throw-ins. Uh, we've, we've had too many goals scored against us in those settings, but comes off a throw-in. The ball gets kind of through um, into the box. The guy kind of weaves up Murphy, and I think Buka doesn't go into a challenge. Um, and it, it just is slotted past Salantano before we can even know about it, and it's 1-1. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, the DC United goal looked like the FCC players just did not want to touch him in the box, to be honest with you. I think that was just the biggest thing. Um, nobody wanted to, you know, create that penalty for DC. Um, I mean, I think o- overall, I think there needs to be a better clearance from Miles, but I mean, not much he can do from there. There needs to be more help around him to be able to, to clear it out. I know there's a lot of bodies just standing around waiting to see what happens with the ball, kind of just ball watching rather than, you know, actively trying to help. So maybe that could have helped outside the box, but as soon as he got inside the box, not much, you know, you're going to do there. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I think overall the defense did a decent job. It's just like you said, communication and maybe early on in the game, that's just because miles has been out for a little bit and you do have a makeshift back line or even a makeshift uh, outside back situation. You know, I know we commented on the lineup, but what the real big play in this game was, was seeing Orishano play on right wing back and actually DeAndre Yedlin for the, I think the third time in his career um, playing at the left wing back spot. So in this goal, you know, there might be a loss of communication with Yedlin, um, but I don't ultimately think it's Yedlin's fault. I think it's between Murphy and Robinson and Buka in that situation. But to go to, you know, my point in seeing Orishano, 39th minute, Sam, we get Orishano running at defenders, a theme of this episode. Goes at a defender, basically pulls another center back over, slots a ball in, perfectly weighted for Pavel Buka to score. Um, and nice take by Buka having, you know, a goal in this game and, and eventually another one later on. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think what all started this, though, was Buka winning the ball back um, to create the chance there, um, kind of earning himself that goal, if you will, um, com- coming full circle. Um, but yeah, great ball by Orlando just to lift it up and over the defenders. Um, that's the second finish that we've seen Buka make almost colliding with the goalkeeper to put it away. So he's always putting the body on the line. Yeah. And honestly, like if you look at this run and then we go in the um, flip side of the half, you know, we go into half and we're up, um, but we go into the 63rd minute and you see a very similar Pavel Buka deep lying run. Um, You have probably not as many of the center mids that are tracking in this play. And the defense doesn't step up. Assad plays a nice ball to Buka. Buka just takes his space and slots it past the keeper. So two goals for him, a brace on the night, which gets him the team of the match day for the MLS. But honestly, it's really the situation of having him occupy space, Sam, um, making this forward run, if you want to call it, both on the first goal and on the second one, and taking it well. I don't know if you remember in the past episode, I called Pavel out. I did. I said... Vel, I love you. You've been playing well. You've been a little quiet, but we need to see more goals. And he scores a brace. He gets another one in the Miami game. So oh, I'm glad he's listening to the pod. I mean, always love players listening to the pod. I think I think it, it helps them, right? It helps them motivate them. But yeah, once again, Buka creating for himself. He carries the ball into DC's half, right? Um, opens himself up for Assad to play that ball to him. And he confidently slots it in, you know, to the right hand corner there. Doesn't even really, you know, think about passing it or anything like that. Um, mm-hmm. Calm, cool, collected finish. So great, great uh, two goals for Buka. Yeah. And really, I hate to say that was like it for FCC, but um, that's what we needed. You know, we go up 3 1 in that situation later on in the game. We do have some more chances, but I mean, six minutes later, DC comes back and props to their. Um, I think it was a sub Sam on this guy. Was it Ritoni or Rigoni carves up the defense and puts one by itself in Tano, like low key, nice goal for them. Defense again, just not willing to maybe dive in on that play, which, you know, I don't want to PK, but you got to do better. Get your foot on it, get something on it. I don't, I don't know if, if it's so much on the, on the defense. I think when you look at plays like that, you have to look at what had happened prior to their possession, right? Point. So yeah. Kubo not being able to clear it, I think him trying to pinpoint a pass to Lucho that right. ball should have been cleared, just launched. You're up, you know, three, one at that point, just kick the ball into their half. And then you can reset as a defense. You can press, you can do whatever you need to do. Um, but yeah, like you said, Buka and Keller got sauced on that play and <laughs> not much Roman can do to, to save it once again. Yeah. And I mean, as we look at that scenario, um, it's really the the poor clearance that leads to that. I think that's a great point. 
by the end of the game, I, I know Roman had some good saves and you have some comments that you saw just uh, to close out the game. Yeah, I mean, closing out the game, you had said that, you know, we had multiple chances to, to kind of even put it more uh, four or five to if, if that um, Halsey has a chance. Great play, obviously, from Lucho and Assad as they've kind of been, you know, the the level up to the Argentinian duo with Orlando as well. Um Halsey needs to finish that. I mean, wide open chance, and he just shoots it right at the keeper. Way too easy of a save for the keeper to make. Um, I mean, I, I would say you would expect more from him, but I mean, he hasn't he hasn't showed that he can do that. So, I guess that's you know <laughs> that's what we'll continue to get from him. But um, the other chance would be uh, the Kubo chance as well. Um, you have a three on three break that Santos kind of led, which. I mean, he was gingerly bringing the the ball up, you know, their half with that, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, but Kubo ends up taking the shot, and he had chances to to leave it to Lucho on his right or you know Santos on his left. Which I mean, it may have been the the right call in the moment, um, but it's one of those that if you're confident enough to shoot it, you got to at least put it on target. Yeah, and like those chances, I mean, it could be the difference between winning and tying. And you know, honestly, if we didn't have some of those saves at the end, like Romans on some of the deflected shots, um, it, it could have been a different story. So, I mean, we have to capitalize on that. I always am on this podcast saying half chances, you know, make make the game in the MLS. But ultimately, it's a 3-2 win, and then all that's all that matters. You know, no matter which way you write it up, you could say it wasn't a great performance, it was a good performance. A win's a win in the MLS, especially on the road which made that the seventh road win in a row at that point, Sam, um, which now is tied for the MLS record, ninth overall road win on the season, um, which I think is pretty impressive. The record is actually 13 wins on the road in the MLS, so we're tied for fourth right now all time uh, with nine, and, I mean, we have a lot of road games to go. So I, I feel pretty confident we can get up there in, in the rankings. Um, it's pretty impressive what we're doing on the road. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, Cincinnati scored two goals in the first half for the first time this this season, which is pretty remarkable. Wait, say um, that again. Hold on. They've not scored two goals in the first half. Yes. Besides, obviously, the Miami game. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Besides so up Miami, to that point. Yeah, up to that point, we had not scored, you know, more than one in the first half there. All the goals, you know, came in the second half um, if we were to pour it on. But I thought that was an interesting stat to see. And then wow. um, I know – the MLS communications PR team put this one out, but the the club's 12th one goal win of the season um, that claimed the most one goal wins over a two season span in MLS history, um, which I, I thought was, I mean, that, that's, that's definitely a record that FC Cincinnati is going to continue to claim because that's our bread and butter is winning by one goal. Making it a uh, very close scenario, get everyone's heart rate up. And... We're entertaining. We're entertaining. Oh, yeah. 100%. Um, but yeah, I mean, I honestly didn't realize about the goal one. Um, very interesting that we hadn't scored two in the first half, but it was enough in this night, like we said, and um, better than the result last time in DC is all I'm going to say. So as we moved on, though, from Wednesday to Saturday, um, we had a huge game, Sam. I mean, what a big hyped game. You know, this game against Inter Miami was going to decide the supporter shield leaders. And it seemed like the team understood that no matter how much, you know, Pat says, you know, we play every game the same way. They have to look at this game and say, this is the one to win. No matter who's there, you know, Miami in this game doesn't have Messi, Suarez, Gomez, Alba, uh, Aviles, their defender was on the bench but didn't come in. You know, a lot of their big contributing guys weren't there, but it doesn't matter. You still have to win, you know, and you have to show up in these games. And this was the one. I mean, I, I just felt like, there was a lot about this game uh, that went into it. And a lot of little like intricacies too, Sam. I don't know if you saw, there was new grass that was put in before the game. I think we all saw the new grass. I mean, I, I know obviously they just laid it down. It's not perfect. Um, it was really, I mean, me sitting in the stands, being in attendance for this game, it was really heartbreaking to hear like casual FCC fans just berating the turf. Um Got like guys, it's a process. Like when mm -hmm. you grow your grass in the front lawn and you're putting straw down, I don't think I'm gonna come by your house and absolutely berate your grass. Like, you know, like it's the same concept, right? Obviously, they just laid it down, give it time. It's natural grass, like 
it's the right move right now. Um, great article on the FC, FC Cincinnati website. Um, pretty cool to learn about the intricacies of of how that all works and why they chose natural turf um, for this yeah, shot, time of year. Carter Chapley. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, my my impressions going into the game, I mean, we saw an interesting lineup, Brian. Yeah, and I was going to say, I mean, first off, I think the players really like the grass, let's be honest. I mean, 6-1 win, are you kidding me? Four goals in the first half, they keep like the grass. the grass. Hashtag keep the grass. Hashtag keep the grass. But the lineup, yeah, I mean, interesting. <laughs> When you first look at it, you're like, I don't know how this is going to go. Salentano, a sawed out left Murphy, Robinson, Alvis Powell's back, Yedlin's back out right, Puka, Wobodo, Acosta, Orishano and Lucho playing the dueling 10, and then Kubo as your striker. So, I mean, me being the dummy at the time is saying, you know, where's Kelsey? Why is Kelsey not in the game? We need a big hold up, you know, striker. But holy crap, was I wrong? I mean, if you look at the way that Miami lined up, the combined center back age was 68. <laughs> that means they're going to be slow. So who do you put up top? Your fastest players. You put Kubo, Acosta, and Orishano to just let them run at them. And honestly, shout out to Pat. That's why he's the coach of the year. I don't know how many times I've said that, but I mean, unbelievable that, um, you know, we made those adjustments in this game and went with something that we really haven't done. Um, maybe a little bit earlier on in the season we did it, but not with the same personnel. Um, also a big shout out to the team for holding up the Miazga and Hagelin jerseys because I thought that was such a cool moment just to get the team saying like, hey, this is what we play for. I think you put that out online and it's really true. I mean, I'm sure those guys are, are pulling for their guys that they put in this work for every single week. So, um, I know Miazga and Haglund probably really appreciated that too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that that's a testament to, you know, just the energy and the electric, you know, kind of feeling that you not only got from the crowd, but also the players as well. Like you honestly felt it before the game, like the chemistry was unbelievable throughout the game, but even, you know, at the beginning, like you're, you're feeling the energy because the ball is moving back and forth on the pitch and it's, you know, it's very fast pace and that's the formation that Pat went with. I've never seen our team just be shot out of a cannon, you know, maybe in the second half of this year, but the first 10 minutes of the game were just like unbelievable. I mean, whether it was the Bailey and the chance um, or the team just with the energy that they had in creating opportunities left and right. I yeah. mean, we, we start off the first five minutes or six minutes where, you know, we do give up an open header. I have to go back and remind myself in the third minute, you know, from a corner, um, which, I hate to say it was a sign of things to come, but was something that started it off. But then after that, that moment, it was all FCC. Yeah. I mean, Kubo goal, um, 10th minute. I mean, first of all, what a turn by Orlando. Like, are you, are you serious? The, the, the wherewithal, the ability to turn on a dime and out sprint their entire defense and just casually lay it off to Kubo, which don't don't get me started on the finish. Um, I'm just happy it went in. It was not it was not pretty, but it it went in. So that's that's all that matters there. Yeah, and honestly, like a lot of guys would have turned on their defender and sprinted and said, "I'm gonna have the goal of the week," you know. Yeah. But for him to say, "Hey, I I'm here in this position," and honestly, four minutes earlier, he has a similar break from Lucho you know, where he hits one right at the keeper instead of playing it across him. It's easy for me to say, obviously, but, you know, could have scored in that one. Whereas this one, he sees, I think, from the prior play, hey, we have open guys in the middle. So he learned from that play, passes it over to Kubo, Kubo slots it away. Um, again, just unbelievable, like you said, connection between the two. Um, and really, again, was a sign of things to come because all game long, Orishano and Lucho were relentless in the back Ooh. line and it was one of the funnest halves i've ever seen in fc cincinnati history mls usl any of it i mean can we get you know these 35 year old players you know defenders to play against every single week sam um maybe this is the farmers league what you know all these other people are calling the mls with this super team down in miami but um yeah it, it was interesting so 16th minute though Lucho nutmegs Busquez 
one twos it with Kubo, oh. dribbles in on the keeper and just doesn't do well with it. But hey, I mean, it was gonna be the best goal I'd seen since the Lucha goal last year. Oh my gosh! I mean, yeah, the the nutmeg on Busquets, Orlando back heel. How oh my like oh, was it or was it Orlando? I forgot if it was yeah, Orlando. It was or, Orlando back heel and. As soon as that back heel happens, you're standing up out of your seat, just going, Oh my God, what am I watching? What am I watching? And he pokes it right at the keeper. But um, once again, it kept the energy high though, which I really appreciated. Yeah. And it, it was really just chance after chance. It was relentless, which I mean, again, playing at home, that's how it should be, you know, playing in TQL, you got to feed off this energy. Like let's imagine this is every game at home and if they start off that way and you get four goals and a half, you're not going to lose. So, but in the 21st minute though, Sam, you know, obviously we did have a one goal lead at the time. It felt like it could have been way more, maybe three Oh or two Oh, but 21st minute, there's another corner and, and Julian Gressel does what Gressel does and what Miami was doing, which is just crosses the ball in a dangerous area. And they get a goal again from a wide open header, which I think, I think it was Alvis Powell, Sam, wasn't it? Yeah. His man. The yeah. first one, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He slipped on it. The second one is just... The second one, it was just awful. It was Bad a pick. Tracking. It was Bad a pick tracking, play. Yeah. Busquez picked our defender and left the other guy open for a wide open header, which Roman had nothing he could do with. But yeah, I, I mean, that's set pieces. It all comes back to corners. Someday, one of these days, we're going to get a stat on how many corner kick goals we've given up because it's a lot. But um, yeah, it's one one at that point. But you're thinking, guys, we're I, we're down even 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 after one one. I I still felt like the energy was still high. Hundred percent. Right? Like whereas I don't know other games, you would feel like oh one one here we go. Like and then Lucho has to pull something out of his butt to you know help us out. But I mean, this felt like anybody could have scored on that field for us, and the energy was just as high as it was you know prior to the goal. Yeah, and I mean, it builds into the 36 minute where Obi intercepts a ball. We give uh, Lucho space in the midfield, and he's not going to miss it. He goes onto his right foot into the box, thought he was going to shoot then, cuts back onto his left, nope. goes around one defender, goes nope. around Busquets, who just nope. looks like a fool. <laughs> Left-footed strike into the corner, like perfectly placed. Um, what a goal. Yeah, I mean, the, the patience, the control – just everything to be able to find the back of the net. I mean, I'm sure if he would have missed that, he oh my gosh. I mean, because he had so many chances. You had so many people around you that you could have laid it off to or, you know, could, they could have scored the goal. But, I mean, he waited for the right moment, made it count. That is, I mean, that's MVP type play. Just fooling around, messing with the defense just for fun and slotting it away like it's no no problem. I hate to say like this was an inspired Lucho Acosta because every game he's out there, he's he's killing it. But from start to finish, the dude was all over the place. And oh, yeah. I mean, props to him. He didn't want to come out of the game and we'll get to that later on. But, you know, I, I'm very happy that at least he gets this goal because he could, like you said, have had probably two or three in this game. But 36 minute, we obviously get the goal. We're up to one 38th minute. You know, we get a corner and Sam, we finally did the corner play. <laughs> we we did a corner play with somebody that isn't Bariel, right? Um, Buka finishes it, um, gets the goal off the Lucho corner, probably meant for a volley further outside the box, I want to say, because it looked like the ball kind of died when it got to about midway through the 18-yard box. Um, what an awkward-looking volley it was from, <laughs> from Buka. Um, but once again, it goes in. I, I think it was kind of just masked by the defenders and almost looked like it was in slow motion, to be honest with you. Um, keep Calendar copy keeper off guard. It. Yeah, exactly. So I just thought that was hilarious goal. It was one of those moments where I was like, Oh, Oh, it went in. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> you had to like, just be like, all right, is it going to ping pong off the different defenders and deflect yeah. in, or I don't think anyone touches it. I think it just goes in. It yeah, just, just glides in. I think it's off his shin though. It's not even really off his foot. It's definitely not as clean as the, uh, the Barrio one from last year, but it's the same play. You get everyone into the box and you play the guy on the backside. Um, hopefully the other teams aren't watching this, but far post. We've done it know, enough our, that they know. Guy's gonna sit we, there. they know. But yeah, they know. But Buka hit the post on 
a similar play in uh, Champions Cup. They they tried this play in Jamaica, and he hit the post on it. So he finally gets his goal, and you could tell he was pumped about it too. I think he was surprised just as much as he was excited about the goal. Just as much <laughs> as everyone else in the stadium. Yeah, yeah, for sure. At that point, you're up 3-1, though, and I hate to say my brain went to let's just hold it. You know, let's get into half. But um, we had another, I think, possession, a play into the box. Their keeper gets the ball, throws it out to their midfielder, Everyone's kind of just standing around, you know, they're waiting to go into the half and Lucho comes back on defense and steals the ball off the guy's foot, takes it down to the touchline. And I instantly call, look at Assad, you know, their right wing back, I think, or Gressel, who was supposed to track back, doesn't get back on the play and he plays a beautiful ball across the field. If I'm being honest, Counter's got to come out and get that oh, ball. Yeah. I don't Count- know if from your perspective, without a yeah, doubt, he's yeah. got to come out on that, but it gets all the way to Assad, who, I mean, was he over there for 30 seconds before he shot the ball, Sam? <laughs> I mean, so I had the perfect angle of it, uh, of this goal by Assad. Like, the good control and the patience, um, obviously the touch on the ball to be able to dribble it away from the keeper. Um, but I'm sure at the same time, his adrenaline was taken over and going like, oh, my God, like, what do I do with this ball? Like, the keeper's out, like... <laughs> where's everybody else nobody else was like really in the 18 yard box yet sure. like in a position for a goal and he was like all right well i'm just you know i'm just gonna shoot it here this honestly may be one of the most threading the needle type shots for a goal that you will ever see perfect timing perfect placement well, just and incredible. threading the needle on the cross yeah i mean cross and finish back to back Go back and look at it, FCC fans. If you want to shout out the uh, the unsung hero in this, it's you, Yakubo. He's in the middle of the play. He took out. <laughs> and he goes down on all fours to duck out of the way, which honestly confused the defenders. And then no, he was in. he was uh he was doing the bark like a dog play. That's what he was doing. You get on ah. all fours and then you bark like a dog, distracts the defenders, and easy goal. It worked. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. I liked it. But I mean, you go on to half and it's 4 1. I mean, maybe I had never seen this team just look so dominant, especially against, you know, supposedly the best team in the MLS at the point. So, I I mean, just was immaculate vibes going into half. You see the whole stadium erupt, stand up and clap, you know, and standing ovation. And at the same time, I'm thinking, like, we got to play a whole nother half. Like, this is going to be boring. (laughs) Yeah, I was about you know, to say, at that like, point. After, after the half, you're thinking, okay, well, at this point in the game, it's just a big party now. Like, nobody, you know, you're probably not paying close attention to the game, but you're just having fun around you. Like, yeah, you know, you don't really have to stress about too much, and you could just have a good time and, and party. I know I saw, like, people leaving because it was, I mean, kind of – a nail in the coffin type thing, which I don't know why you're leaving at half, Um, you know, sold out crowd once again at at TQL, but I don't know. I don't know. But later on early in the second half, we get another one. Yeah. 57th minute, just unbelievable play by Orishano. Um, Comes two minutes, actually, Sam, after Obi gets another yellow card. So he's out for the next game, which I think is a moment where I, at, at the time I'm like still upset about, you know, that play. And then two minutes later we score, but um, let's be honest, Orishano had himself a game. This guy turns on the defenders, takes Busquets to the line, just destroys the guy and slots it to Kubo who puts it in. I mean, what this, a play. This entire game, Orlando put on a, a master class in dribbling um, and embarrassed Busquets again. Um Kubo once again not the best finish um takes a deflection as it's going in could have been better but once again it went in that's all that matters talk about connection what position was Yuya Kubo playing in when he scored this goal right right back he had been moved from striker to right wing back but still found himself in the position to score like he was a striker the man the man He'll play wherever he wants. He'll play. He's like Lucho. Lucho could start from our half and dribble the ball, you know, into opponent's half, take people one on one, whatever he wants to do. Kubo is kind of just like a shadow, right? He's just like a shadowy figure making his way up the pitch wherever he wants. And then 
he's just there when you need him. And it's like, oh, how'd you get there? Yeah, he kind of pops up in different positions and <laughs> it, it's very hard to defend. And I'm sure like their defenders are like, this guy was just playing striker and now he's right back. And but he's still in where the striker would be like, what's going on here? Um, yeah, I mean, but at that point, five one, you're like, we're approaching Germany level uh, embarrassment at oh, this yeah. point, I think, you know, in the score line. But um, yeah, 62nd minute Brazil, wasn't it? Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> against Germany. Germany embarrassed Brazil. <laughs> Sam's wearing the jersey for those who uh, aren't watching. But um, yeah, I mean, so we go from that. We're up 5-1. And I think Busquets said, enough's enough. I'm I'm over to this game. I got to get showers. out of here. I got to get out of here. So I think Kimpana goes in on uh, Yedlin, yeah. which is a foul. But, you know, other than that, it's like, okay. But it had been frustration that had been building for them. He comes over and he gives, uh, uh, you know, Chris Pinto a piece of his mind. And, and Pinto, or not Pinto, it was Penso, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Penso, but he, he was not having it. He gives him a yellow. He still is hearing the guy out. And Busquets probably said something not very nice. And he gets another yellow. Yeah. Red I, card, I, you're out of here. And everyone in the stadium is saying goodbye. Yeah. I mean, two yellows for descent um is it just doesn't look good does not look good for a guy like that um i i I thought it was interesting even campana like after he fouled yedlin he was like yep like you know that was a foul like he maybe argued it a little bit but he was like all right whatever you know foul busquets who wasn't really even close to the play just straight up to the ref just in his face um and then i think he touches the face he he, he takes forever to get off the pitch as well Right. It took yeah, him he like should be fine for that. Five minutes to like get off the pitch. And it's like, dude, you, you just got red carded. Like be a world class player that you are and get off the field. Like you did this to yourself. We'll talk about it later, but there's a double standard in the MLS for this team. <laughs> Let's be honest, it is. So they're down ten men and you know, we're up what at that point five, five one. one. Yeah. yeah. So seventy second minute. Dotto gets his first goal in the MLS, Sam. Yeah, I, once again, Assad and Lucho, right? Spectacular passing clinic. The Argentines were carrying us for this game. Um, Assad finds Dotto in the middle, and he finishes this one. Um, you know, last, what was it, last game? Or no, the game prior, um, he had that wide open goal that that Lucho mm-hmm. put, a, put on a platter for him. Um, he puts this one away. Um, decent finish. Through the wickets. Through, through, yeah, through the keeper's legs, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and led led to his first MLS goal, which long time coming. Um, he scored in the Champions Cup, but still hadn't had that MLS goal. Um, so kudos to Dotto for for working hard and getting that. What meant more to him too, Sam? He is a inner Miami Academy product. That's a slap in the face. <laughs> he said. He said, I'm going to score on the team that I came up through, which I think is hilarious um, that he gets his first goal against them. Um, but yeah, I mean, six one, we just shut out the rest of the game. See it out. Honestly, probably could have had seven, eight goals, eight, um, nine, ten. Yeah. Some people wanted a 10 piece in the game, which would have been impressive. But well, the, the crowd was chanting, you know, we want seven. And then it goes to the other chant of, you know, where is Messi or, you know, you need Messi. You need Messi. Yeah, you need Messi, right? And then the chant goes to "We have Lucho," right? So the Bailey was on point with every single chant that they had, um, and it was just I don't a, think, a good uh, time. I don't think Lucho was a fan of the you know you need he Messi chant. He didn't but... like it. He didn't like it. But as an FCC fan, it's funny and it's true. <laughs> Yeah, which, I mean, props to him for being a good sport. I'll get yeah. to later what happens with this scenario. Um, but final impressions for me is just, like, probably one of the coolest games I've ever seen, especially with the moment that it was in. You know, in this game, Kubo gets a brace. He's up to nine goals already on the season, which is actually more than Brandon Vasquez had in the MLS last year, Sam. Crazy. Can you imagine that? Crazy. Unbelievable. Second time we've scored six goals in a game in club history. The other one being against San Jose in 2022. Um, And this actually makes Noonan to have a percentage of 66 of percent of the games that he's won, um, you know, in three years 
which is the best ever over this amount of time. Um, pretty impressive. I mean, we, we kind of knew that this was this way and there's all this talk about nonce, nonce, nonce. Look what Pat Noonan's doing guys. Come on. Yeah. I, I think very Did the impressive. crew beat Miami this year. <laughs> no, I, no, they didn't. no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think they so. did. Uh, but yeah, to your point, Miami had never given up six goals um, tied for their, their biggest defeat as well. So we're not only etching our history, but we're we're etching someone else's history at the same time, which is always fun. Um, but this is the first time that FCC has been on top of the East since match day seven. So it's been a while um, and it feels good. Absolutely. Let's keep the, uh, the vibes rolling. We're going to go to a break here. But before we go, I have a trivia question for you, Sam. How many three assist games does Lucho Acosta have in his MLS career? He should have been awarded three in this past game, but was awarded two. We're going to give him, I'm going to say, a third assist with that last goal to Dotto there. Um, hopefully that gets corrected, including that one in this game. If they do count it, how many three assist games does he now have in his MLS career? Gosh, I mean, it feels like 20, you know, like for the amount of times that you know, you're looking at the stat line and, and Lucho, 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 just everywhere. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with four, four times in his career that he's had three assist games. All right. Well, stay tuned to the end of the episode and we'll give you the answer. We'll be right back. Hey, FC Cincinnati fans. We are pumped to share our new sponsor peak cocktails. I'm sipping on the passion fruit margarita, which is so spicy. And it makes me feel like I'm on the beach. Ooh, that sounds great. I'm drinking the Blood Orange Spritz, which has a great subtle ginger flavor coming from its scientifically formulated recipe to promote exercise recovery, enhance relaxation, and support a better night's sleep. Ryan, that's exactly why I love them. Their cocktails are designed to fit seamlessly into your health-conscious lifestyle, giving you the enjoyment of a delicious adult drink without the downsides of alcohol. Guys, next time you are looking for that post-workout drink or an afternoon pick-me-up, grab a Peak Cocktail. Visit them at www.peakcocktails.com and use the code FLYINLION at checkout to get 20% off your first order. Zach, enjoy your drink. Welcome back, everyone. What a week for FC Cincinnati. Huge, huge games against DC United, Inter-Miami. FC Dallas from the prior week, but the vibes are, are rolling right now. From this game, Sam, the Inter-Miami game, we get a Lucho Acosta team of the match day, shocker, and Pat Noonan. So shout out to those two guys. Um, they had just unbelievable, I mean, for Pat to do what he did with his formation, Lucho doing what he normally does, you know, they need to have a permanent fixture like we do in our jersey swaps of the week for Lucho and the team of the match day for the MLS. And you know what that's called? The MVP award. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's hard to deny it right now. I mean, once again, I, I think it's the, the conversation that you have in every single sport, right? Most valuable player, right? You take that player off of a team, how valuable is the team without that player? It is without a doubt Lucho Acosta. Um not even close um, for, for any other player, I believe. Um, we don't have anybody like him that can do what 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 he does. We have elements of, of different people that can complement what he does, but my God, what a player. Um, and once again, like you had said earlier in the podcast um, with Pat, just being able to take a chance, take a risk with the formation, and it pays off exponentially. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just going to roll into the Lucho segment here because we're on it. But one goal, three assists in my book, you know, on the night, two technically right now. We'll see if it's corrected. Like I said, 10 goals, 17 assists on the year now. Unbelievable stat for what, 24 games into the season? Um, 50th goal for FCC um, in his career. Again, most in club history. Awesome for him to get that 50. 26 assists in a single season is the MLS record, Sam. He's at 17 right now. Dude's going to get it. Yeah, he's got to get it. He's got to get it. Just just think about it. That's only three games. You have three more games with three assists. He's tied. 
yeah, he's going to do it. I think he's going to do it. And again, just cement that, I mean, what we're seeing out of him is just unbelievable. Yeah. I, I mean, on top of that, the other stat that I saw was this is his fourth season of 10 goals, 10 assists. He and three other players are the only people to do that in MLS history. So once again, Lucho, every single game edges his name in FCC history, MLS history, soccer history, every single game. Dude, if you have to rewrite the FCC record books and the MLS record books for every game that the guy plays in, he must be doing something right. He must be an MVP. He must be an MVP. He might might even be a repeat MVP for the first time ever. (laughs) Do we do we think that's gonna happen? I don't know. I don't know. But what did who did you have on uh, your jersey swap of the week? Yeah, for my jersey swap of the week. Gosh, man, if we if we had Zach on here, I would have felt more comfortable. Um, but I had to to go with Buka. Um, for my jersey swap of the week. I mean, three goals in two matches this week. Like you had said, team in the match day midweek. Um, he has had more goals in less than a month than in his first four months with the club, which is crazy. Um, Leads the team in starts, passing, you know, completion percentage, um, among other stats. I mean, he's starting to find his rhythm in the midfield and and showing he is Champions League and world-class talent. Vels is a good player, and he's now really coming into his own and fitting into the culture of the team, the connection, I mean, just look at when he scores, all the guys that come over to him. And then, you know, for other guys that score, like who's one of the first players to go over to them when they score? It's Pavel. I mean, everyone loves the guy. It's really cool to see. Yeah, I mean, so before before I announce him as my jersey swap of the week, I do want to give a shout out to Kubo, though. Kubo absolutely deserves some sort of honorary, you know, jersey swap. Like I said, if Zach was here, I would have hoped that he would have, you know, chose (laughs) Kubo, but... Yeah, I mean, Kubo's on fire as well. Um, no doubt about it. Like you had said, nine goals. Um, I, I want to say that's either eclipsed or tied his all-time high, I think, um, mm-hmm. in, in all, you know, in his entire career there, club career, um, which is awesome. I'd have to look more more in depth into that, but he has been on fire as well. So happy to see both of those guys. I mean, if you want to call them midfielders, I know <laughs> that's what shows up on the Jumbotron, so... Yeah, I mean, if you can run through every position and say every guy was worthy of a jersey swap, I mean, we must have had a good yeah, probably week good. <laughs> um, in a lot of ways. But from my standpoint, I'm going to go two weeks in a row with uh, Luca Orishano. You know, two assists on the night, could have had probably two or three goals on the night. He was highest in expected goals of any player on the field, tied for the most successful dribbles of any player on the field just torched their back line. I mean, what a fun player to watch. I'm once again, like what I say last week, every single game, this guy is going to do something exciting. He's just as exciting as Lucho, if not more, because he's got the speed. Lucho has the finesse. He's got, you know, the, the little itty bitty dribbling pinpoint type stuff. Luca Orlando just beats you to the spot. That's what he does. And he, he's pure speed. And, the way he tiptoed down the sideline to get past Busquets to leave it off to Kubo, that's that'll show you how much not only because at that point, what we were up 4 1, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, are you making that play or are you just watching the ball go out of bounds, right? For most players, no, 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 no. Game's not over, game's not done, whistle's not blown. Like he continues to play until the whistle's blown, which is awesome. To your point, I mean, like the the ball is stuck to the guy's foot and he just exudes confidence when he is running at people. And I I just think like, I mean, Barrial was an unbelievable player in a lot of ways, but the way that Orishano can just take over, like you said, a moment and just burst by somebody, the change of pace is just, I, I haven't seen it in the league. I mean, you see a lot of guys that can run at defenders, but not at the level that that he has been, and that's why he's an all-star this year. And that's hopefully why FC Cincinnati will trigger this buy option just to keep him around because I'm honestly worried that this guy is going to get looks at the best clubs around the world. I did, I did see. I thought it was pretty funny. So to your point on Barrial, Barrial scored 
this weekend as well, right? And I saw somebody post that Barrio only scored because they, you know, he saw what we did to Miami and he wants to come back. So he, you know, he's trying to, hey guys, I can I can do what or Orlando does too. I, you know, bring me back. I mean, Barrio on the left, Orishano on the right. Oh I mean, what a dangerous lineup, especially with the Lucho connection. I mean, oh, man, I, I think we'd win every game. Um, but yeah, as we move on, though, there was some funny moments, um, you know, for this week. What, what was your card of the week? Oh, my gosh. This is uh, this had to have been number one card of the week for for anybody that was at the game. Um, I just went with a full Busquets in general. Um was just an embarrassing night for someone with over 800 club appearances, a World Cup, three Champions Leagues, and he's a nine-time Spanish League uh, you know, champion, one of the greatest defensive midfielders of our generation, if you want to call him that. Um, he just got embarrassed, uh, embarrassed by Lucho with the nutmeg, and then was sauced on Lucho's goal, gets embarrassed on the sideline by Orlano with the dribbling ability. On top of that, shows no class, no composure, gets a yellow and a second yellow for descent within seconds of each other and just walks off the pitch head down, you know, just awful. Tata Martino was laughing at it, which I, I thought was just a needle in the coffin, to be honest with you. We're going to get flamed for this take online and just know it because of the legend of Busquets. But in this game, he had a 2.9 match rating. I mean, dude was terrible. <laughs> he played center back, which is not his typical position, but that's on them. So I don't even care about that. He was their captain for this game, but didn't lead by example and getting sent off. So what did this guy do? I didn't see anything out of this player in this game with all of these other stars that they have on this team. They needed him to step up in this game away from home. And I hope it doesn't come back to bite us in the butt, but he was not it on this night. And uh, I'm, I think I'm going to put out a clip later on just about how we ended Sergio Busquets career. <laughs> Yeah, once again, we'll probably get flamed, but this is all all in good fun, um, especially in the moment for FCC. Uh, meant a lot to us to get that win over, like I said, somebody with that type of resume. Um, we just would expect better. Um, that's all that is. Yeah, no like actual hate for sure. And I, <laughs> again, we'll probably get flamed for that, but that's all right. Um, my card of the week, Sam, was uh, Tata Martino for um, Inter-Miami. He was very upset with Lucho. The end of the game, they were jawing back and forth. Um, he was not happy about Lucho's advanced passing at the end of the game. If I come to remember, Inter-Miami had beaten Red Bulls by five goals earlier this year and uh, didn't seem to be too you know, mad about that in, uh, in their advancing passes and goals that they had earlier on. So... Um, come on, grow up. We play in the MLS in a professional league. And if we're going to dominate a team, like too bad. I mean, it happens on the world stage. Just ask like Sam's rock in Brazil again. Like we said, these games happen. Take it. You don't have to be salty about it. Yeah. I mean, just be tactically better. Don't don't gripe at, you know, one of your country's best players in Lucho Acosta um, who should be on your national team. Um, I mean, it is, it is what it is, right? I, I think like you had said, just the, the level of class, right. I, I think goes by the wayside, um, when you're, when you're on the other end of it, when you're winning six, one, right. You're, you're, you probably do the same thing that we did. So just play better and that won't happen. Yeah, the two guys hug it out in the end after the game, and they, I think, clarify some things. But um, they're gamers, you know, is really what it is. And you're not going to take Lucho Acosta off the field, number one. You know, Pat Noonan in, in that scenario is probably begging for him to come off. But Lucho said, I'm a player. You know, I'm out here. I lost this game last year to you guys, and now I'm going to go and embarrass your team. So, and and they did. I mean, and that's what happened. And he's got to take that. He's been a professional coach for a long time and probably hasn't gotten beaten up like this in a long time as well. You can go and be mad and pout about it, but don't take it out on our best player. The e ego is something. What's that? So the ego's bruised a little bit, right? It's funny. It's really funny. And again, another take that we'll probably get flamed about, but I think it's hilarious what happened in this moment. <laughs> 
as we move on, Sam, um, we had some news right before this Inter Miami game. One Miles Robinson, our defender, is joining the U.S. Olympic team. It was officially announced this morning. We will miss Miles Robinson for likely one or two games. That's the question right now. Right now, the rumor is that he's going to be here through the Charlotte game, possibly Chicago at home. New York Red Bulls probably looking like the game on the road that he will miss. What an honor for Miles, my personal opinion. You know, honestly, a reason why these guys come to FCC. They are given a chance to play for their country and to play in these moments. FCC could have denied, you know, this and, and props to them. We honestly are in a point where we really need center backs, but this is how you sustain and get good players in the future. You show the best players out there in the league. If you play well and you're representing, you know, your country in the best way, we're going to support you. And uh, you know that Miles is going to give his all when he's here. So no slight to him for, for choosing this. Um, and really, you know, I, I really think in the future, it, you're going to see a lot of the same with yeah. all these young Academy guys, you're going to see more of the same in the future. Yeah. I, I think, you know, as far as from a fan perspective, I know this is an FC Cincinnati podcast. We love the club, um, but we have to realize that the players are, are I mean, I know some people are split on this, but the players are ultimately country over club. That's, that's how, that's how it'll always be. Um, because playing for your national team means something, um, representing your entire country and not just, you know, one singular club that, you know, resides in that country. It mean it means an awful lot. Right. And so to your point, Ryan, it shows, you know, those younger Academy players of, you know, man, you know, I'd really love to be like miles and, and represent my country, go win a gold medal at the Olympics. I know, you know, once again, that's a little, you know, iffy. Uh, you know, some people do or don't like the Olympics, you know, whether you're hosting it or not. But once again, it, it's a spectacle, right, for the whole world to see. Um, and it means a lot when you can come out on top. So hopefully, you know, we, we can do something special. It's a good leadership moment for Miles, too. I mean, he's likely to be possibly a captain, you know, for the team. You know, Walker Zimmerman is the other center back. And then you have Jordi and Mihailovic of uh, Colorado Rapids as well as the over U23 guys. So again, for those who aren't familiar, the Olympic team is made up of under 23 year old players. You're allowed to have three guys that are above that age range. So um, for miles to come in as that selected player um, again, it's a big honor. That would mean that miles most likely will miss the all-star game. Correct. I believe so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that he'll miss that, which is like, all right, whatever. No, no yeah. That no means nothing. You know, that means yeah. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. He got, I mean, he got the honor of being selected to it. Yeah. Um, but for him, I mean, look, look at how much the U S respects him. The guy went through an Achilles injury that could have ended his career. He was at Atlanta where the U S headquarters for soccer is now going to be, you know, set up, but said, Hey, I want to come to Cincinnati because of their playing surface because of their fans because of the culture that they've built and he was right look at how bad atlanta's been this year i mean he made the right decision and sam he was able to represent the u.s for copa america didn't get a single minute but that's okay the olympic team now i mean that's that's a huge thing for him i'm sure and you know selfishly we want him here we want him especially now with all the center backs that we have out um but to be honest, he's going to miss a lot of just leagues cup type stuff. And then he'll be back with the team. So the moment is kind of in a way, a good thing for us. If you really think about it, I would, I wouldn't go that far. Because, okay. Maybe not that far. Yeah, maybe not, maybe not that far. Cause we're still missing, <laughs> we're still Miles missing Robinson. Yeah. Right. That's um, fair. That's fair. But yeah. Once again, just to reiterate, like this is a huge honor for him, happy for him and, you know, wish him the best with the U S men's national team. Now we have even more of a reason to watch the U.S. national team, sure. you know, in the Olympics. Sure. Um, their first game is going to be July 24th against the host country, France, in a huge game. France has got a really good under-23 national team. I would imagine Mbappe might be picked for their team. I know. As one Thierry of their honorary. Coach, right? Thierry Henry is yeah. their coach as well. So, 
go watch and support the U.S. and Miles Robinson. He'll be back with us, you know, come August. Um, I think Inter Miami might be one of our first games back. Um, but as we look into match day 26, so you know, as FC Cincinnati is now leading the Supporter Shield standings, um, we will go and play. Charlotte at home again, actually, we have three straight home games, but um, Charlotte has lost their last two. They do have a pretty solid team, though, this year, Sam. Um, Their defense has been pretty good. They lead the league in clean sheets. They've conceded 23 goals, which is the second least in the MLS as well. Um, But they've struggled a little bit in their last couple games. I'm interested to see this one, to be honest, um, because I know we tied them earlier on in the year always you know playing in charlotte is going to be difficult but we seem to do well against them at home yeah i I know you know obviously like you said their last two matches they've lost however this will be 10 days in between their last match and their match with fc cincinnati so they will have more rest than you know what fc cincinnati had um so i i wonder if that's going to play into advantage for them um it could could not you know is what it is, but like you had said, their defense is, is pretty solid this year. Yeah. And to be honest, like this break, you know, since they've last played, I think they're one of the only MLS teams without a player on the all-star game roster. So they might be a little bit upset about that too, and come out with a little bit of a chip um, to show, you know, the best team in the league, what's what, but um, I, I think we come out, you know, firing again because at least we don't have a mid, mid week match, you know, mm-hmm. in, in this one. We get a little bit of a rest. Um, to everyone's question, and I think what a lot of people are going to be wondering is do we roll out the same formation? You know, to the layperson watching this past game against Inter Miami, it's like, you guys just scored six goals in one by five. Why would you not roll out the same team? But um, Charlotte's physical, they have a pretty big back line. They like to attack on their wings. Um, I think he's honestly going to go back to what we did against DC. Um, Maybe, well, you're going to get Kubo slotted in for Obi in the midfield. Um, But yeah, I I think you put Kelsey back up top and you get more of a physical presence in there. The formation wise and putting Orishano more forward will be the question of things. And I think he probably honestly puts him in a right wing back in my honest opinion unless they say, Hey, we still want to see maybe a larger sample size of what it looks like for him up top. Yeah. I think it'll be interesting as well. Um, you know, given the great defense that Charlotte has, um, I can see Pat playing more conservative, um, to your point, a lot more hold up play with Kelsey up top. He might go back to that, um, Dotto Kelsey, um, Mm -hmm. you know, up top that we saw, like you said, um, against DC, um, with OB out, card accumulation, you're going to see Kubo in the midfield. Um, I, I agree with everything you're saying here. I just, I'm wondering if Charlotte is the game that could, uh, could um, honestly could be a tougher game than the Miami game just because of the way our offense played the last game and the way their defense is rolling. Um, our defense isn't still, you know, I'm not, it's still not like 100%, right? Mm-hmm. And it depends on where you slot. Orlando, right? So if you move Orlando up top, you're moving a speedy guy that can recover pretty well off of the the left or right side. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a big question for Pat, but I, I think if you had to guess and you had to put our great, you know, two tactical minds together, we, you know, we'd probably go a little bit more conservative on that. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the way I would approach it. Um, you had a possible knock, I want to say, on Alvis Powell. So we'll see how he kind of come out came out of this game, you know, he comes out a little bit early. Um, It was nice to get somewhat of a rotation because we were up by so much, you know, against Miami. Um, But I I think probably he's going to go with a similar back line, if I had to guess. Yeah. Um, Maybe you get Keller back in there just because he did have a little bit more rest. Um, But everyone else is going to look the same. I really, again, hope we can lean on Kubo providing what he's been doing all year long in the midfield because Obi being out against um, Charlotte, you know, and, and with their counter attacking that they have, we'll need some guys to cover ground, especially if we're going to have, like we said, Orishano up top, if that's the way that we're going to go, we just need to have guys that can cover. So also I was doing some mathematics, um, FCC land. Let me know if I'm wrong or Ryan, let me know if I'm wrong, but, um, was looking at the standings and our good friends, 
a couple miles down the road in Columbus um, still have three games that they have uh, up on us, I believe, mm-hmm. um, or no, two games, two games up on us. Cause they've Ooh, played yeah. 20, we played 22. Um, so if they win all, you know, just th- their next three games, that's nine points. We would have to lose our two games for them to be tied with us. So don't worry, don't fret. Like, if we continue to to keep winning and say we draw here or there, we're still going to be one or two up top. Um, we've got a, a pretty decent cushion. Yeah, I mean, great point, because honestly, like what I think you're getting at is like you see this game and it acts like a pinnacle, you know, yeah. and beating Miami and saying, hey, we did it, you know, but we can't get complacent, you know, mm-hmm. and and where we're at in the records um, with things, you know, at sitting at 48 points, we had 69 last year at the end of the season and we're on even a hotter streak and arguably a better season than even last year. Um, so I think we're game for it. Just again, game by game, take it game by game. And I, I think we'll get there. I think in this game, my score prediction for this one's going to be two, one uh, with a victory for FCC. I'm going to go one Oh hard fought battle. Um, I, I think I just want to see Celentano get another clean sheet. That's all I think I, I I'm hoping and and praying for the guy that he outplays the other guy on the other side who leads the league in clean sheets. So that'd be really nice to to get one passed on him. Yeah, and I I think that um, you know Charlotte hasn't necessarily like had our number. Like I said, maybe at home they've done well, but when we've played Charlotte again at home, we've done pretty well. You get Lucha's goal of the year happening against Charlotte last year. Um, so I'm hoping there's some more magic against Charlotte in the battle of the queen cities again if we want to term it that and as they self-proclaim themselves the queen city too no. um but we still need a rivalry name for this i yeah i mean <laughs> i don't like we're the tr- we're the true queen city i mean i don't know how else to put it you know that's it's like they're fakers you know <laughs> yeah i mean it's closer than like our Nashville rivalry or whatever, because we actually do share like a nickname of a city, if you want to say that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's my final thoughts for it. I'm hoping that we can get a solid win in. Cause then after that, we have, I think what Chicago at home and New York before we do have a little bit of a break. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Sam, are you ready for our trivia question and answer? Yeah. Hit me. How many three assist games does Lucho Acosta have in his MLS career was the question. Sam had locked in four, and he actually hit the nail on the head there with that one. It was four games that Lucho has had of three assists, um, his last one being against San Jose earlier this year. He had one 2022, 2018, 2016, if you include this past game against Inter Miami, if they do give him the assist, that would make five. But for now, Sam, you got it right. Okay, I was about to say for all you haters out there that that aren't included, <laughs> well, you got it. Actually, right, but... don't include it. Don't include it because I'm right right now. So, um, for all you you know pro Lucho people, you know I no, I got the trivia question right. We're gonna keep it at at four. Um, <laughs> No, I, that's incredible. I mean, four games of, of three assists, borderline five. Um, that that's amazing. How many, did you say how many he had with DC or or FC or they all FC? Uh, it was split split. Gotcha. Two and two and then three, if you want to count the other one. But, um, if you do not include this past game, that would be 12 games of two assists that he's had which again, probably is up there somewhere in the MLS record. Other record. Yeah. I mean, just unbelievable. The amount of goal contributions again, that he's had Um, set records, FCC set records, Sam, we had a heck of a week, fun episode tonight. We'll be back next week. Like comment, subscribe. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you guys later. Oh,